pulmonary hypertension of the newborn is characterized by the presence of an increased pulmonary vascular resistance, associated with shunting of deoxygenated blood from the pulmonary to the systemic circulation causing severe hypoxemia. In the term infant, persistent pulmonary hypertension is characterized by the failure of the physiological postnatal decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance that results in impaired oxygenation right ventricular failure, and pulmonary to systemic shunting. The pulmonary vasculature is either maladapted, maldeveloped, or underdeveloped. In the premature infant, the mechanisms are similar, and the early onset pulmonary hypertension is due to pulmonary vascular immaturity and its underdevelopment. While late onset pulmonary hypertension is due to the maladaptation of the pulmonary circulation that is seen with severe bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Comprehensive echocardiography is indicated when there is a clinical suspicion of persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn. To exclude congenital heart disease, echocardiography is useful in multiple ways making the diagnosis and grading the severity, determining the need for specific or supportive therapy, monitoring the response to therapy, and rational weaning of therapy. Once the diagnosis of persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn is confirmed by echocardiography, the clinical course and the effects of medical interventions can be monitored with the emphasis on pulmonary artery pressure and PVR, myocardial performance, and shunting through ductus arteriosus, and open for immunoval. The most common method used for assessing pulmonary arterial pressure, is to perform a continuous wave spectral Doppler of the tricuspidal regurgitation jet. Most patients will have a degree of tricuspidal regurgitation, which is often, though not always, made worse when the right ventricle is operating at higher pressures. The modified Bernoulli equation states that the pressure gradient between either side of a fixed obstruction with no significant length, is proportional to the velocity of the flow across that obstruction. Thus, the estimated pulmonary arterial pressure, expressed in millimeters of mercury, will be equal to four times the quadratic velocity of the tricuspidal jet at the continuous wave Doppler, plus the mean right atrial pressure which is generally assumed to be around 2 to 5 mm of mercury. An optimal quality tricuspidal regurgitation jet, shows a well demarcated envelope. This is aided by assessing maximal tricuspidal regurgitation jet velocity by imaging from three views, apical forechamber, short axis, and modified parastinal long axis. Measuring an inadequate Doppler spectral envelope will potentially lead to an underestimation of systolic pulmonary arterial pressure. The angle of ensnation should be less than 20 degrees to achieve a reliable measurement. This estimation of systolic pulmonary arterial pressure is not reliable in the presence of right ventricular failure or right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. It is also to be considered that tricuspid valve regurgitation cannot always be observed, and is present in approximately 60 to 85 percent of patients with pulmonary hypertension. In these cases, an alternative estimation of pulmonary arterial pressure is based upon the alignment of the interventricular septum. It is best analyzed at the end of systole in the parastinal short axis view, above the level of the papillary muscles. Normally, the septum bows into the right ventricle, O-shaped left ventricle. With increasing right ventricular pressure, the interventricular septum will flatten, D-shaped left ventricle, and eventually curves into the left ventricle, crescent-shaped left ventricle. A more objective estimation is made, by calculating the left ventricle systolic eccentricity index, which is the ratio of left ventricle dimension, parallel and perpendicular to the septum. Normal left ventricle systolic eccentricity ratio is typically 1. As it increases in pulmonary hypertension, it allows for quantification of a more subjective parameter of intraventricular septum flattening and bowing. Serial measurement of the eccentricity index is over time may allow monitoring of the progression of the right ventricular pressure.
pulmonary vascular resistance can be assessed by measuring right ventricular systolic time intervals, as the pulmonary artery acceleration time. This index has recently been validated as a feasible and reproducible non-invasive echocardiographic imaging marker, for detection of pulmonary vascular disease and pulmonary hypertension in neonates and children. A value below 90 milliseconds reliably detects pulmonary vascular disease, while below 40 milliseconds detects severe form of pulmonary hypertension. The normal value of the pulmonary artery acceleration time to right ventricular ejection time ratio is approximately 0.31, or greater. A ratio less than 0.23 indicates increased pulmonary arterial pressure. Visual inspection of the shape of the Doppler flow envelope pattern across the right ventricle outflow tract is a sensitive predictor of pulmonary hypertension and right heart dysfunction in children and infants. The mid-systolic notch, also referred to as the flying W, is associated with elevated pulmonary vascular resistance and pulmonary arterial pressure. A ductal right-to-left or bidirectional shunt is observed in 73-91% of the patients with persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn. Transductal right-to-left blood flow can be used to estimate systolic pulmonary arterial pressure, when it lasts greater than or equal to 30% of the heart cycle. However, measurement of pulmonary arterial pressure via ductal flow is often not reliable. The presence of a shunt between the systemic and pulmonary circulations also allows estimation of the relative pressures of the two systems. Large, non-restrictive shunts in the absence of any outflow tract stenosis, will result in equalization of the systemic and pulmonary pressures. Assessment of the direction of transductal blood flow is more useful and will indicate the relation between pulmonary and systemic pressures. The direction and quantity of flow across the shunt will reflect the relative difference between the systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance. At a qualitative assessment, an increased pulmonary vascular resistance can cause an increased pulmonary artery diameter. Impaired right ventricular systolic and diastolic performance will lead to dilation of the right ventricle, right atrium, and inferior vena cava. Right ventricular function in pulmonary hypertension can be assessed by measuring the fractional area change, myocardial performance index and tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. Fractional area change is a planimetric measure of the ratio of systolic to diastolic area in apical four or three chamber view. By manual tracing of the endocardial border of the right ventricle, it is important that the entire ventricle is visualized when tracing the endocardium in systole and diastole, including the outflow tract and the lateral wall. Trabeculation should be included within the cavity under the tracing procedure. Normal values range from 25 up to 45% in preterm and term infants. Median values of 19% are associated with the need for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or death. Myocardial performance index represents the relation between the sum of isovolumic contraction and relaxation time and ejection time and can be derived from pulse Doppler or tissue Doppler. Right ventricular dysfunction, but also increased right ventricular afterload, will increase the time of isovolumic phases and therefore lead to a higher MPI. Tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion is a measure of right ventricle longitudinal function, and obtained from the four-chamber view using the end mode, with the cursor aligned along the direction of the lateral annulus. Tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion provides useful information about longitudinal fiber shortening, and it has shown good correlation with techniques estimating right ventricle global systolic function. Diminished value, below 4 mm, is predictive for the need of ECMO and death in infants with PPHN.